example of a small annoying habit. I don't want to say it. Because I, I think <laughs> Cause one of us. <laughs> no, because it's like I do have friends that listen and oh, that yeah, are yeah, aware. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to like call that. Like they'd be like, "Oh shit, that's me." I'm like, "Yeah, obviously that thing I did didn't work." Welcome back to another episode of Asian Boss Girl. Today, we're going to be talking about friendships because this is a topic that is highly, highly requested. Mm -hmm. I think when it comes to our young adult, middle adult years, uh, friendships really do morph and change, right? Mm -hmm. And there is a lot that goes on, um, all variety of relationships that change. And what we decided to do was to put a little call out on Instagram and have you all write in with any specific questions you have about friendships. So that's what we're going to be going over today. Yes. Are we excited? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Let's talk about friendships. Yes. Let's talk about friendships. The relationships that are platonic and non-romantic, which sometimes don't get as much light and, mm -hmm. so, and don't get as much focus. Our first question is going to be a little bit more on the challenging side, um, but I think we should just start out strong. So mm. this person wants to know if any of us have ever been in a toxic friendship, and if we have, what is the best way to let a toxic friendship go? Hmm. Ooh. Yes, I have been in one. Have you ladies been in one? Not really? Oh, you're lucky. I think I've had good friendships that had toxic periods. Mm. Mm. I mean, yes, I have been, so I can speak, I can answer this question. Um, I feel like it's funny because toxic friends don't start off as toxic. Mm, That's okay. true. You, you know, become a friend. When right? you, you're not going to enter into a friendship if you know that it's going to become toxic. So at some point, mm. you actually liked this person. You know, whether it's because you were at work and you were like mutually talking about how difficult work is or mm. it's someone that you met um, through a mutual friend mm. and you're like partying buddies or whatever. But at some point, you start to have more in-depth conversations with them mm -hmm. and you start to value their opinions more and you start to sort of almost like mirror their actions and basically what they do just becomes more meaningful to you mm. yeah. and at some point it takes a turn and you're like mm. oh I'm learning something about you that I didn't like when I first became your friend and now it's become kind of toxic to me yeah. right so the example that I have I think I've brought her up on this podcast before and it's um. probably going to be the same example um, but this friend I met through another friend and we started off as just like hangout buddies, partying buddies. And then I started just getting closer to her th with her through dinners and various other interactions. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I enjoyed her humor. I, I think she was like a fun person to be around. But something that I did identify early on is that she tended to talk to gossip about other people a lot, mm. uh, a lot, a lot. And one thing that I noticed is that she liked to put other people down to probably inadvertently put herself up mm. right yeah, but yeah. it was done in a way where it's like oh you're my friend i can like you know mm -hmm. let me just but it happened very often and it was one of those friends where i felt like oh if you're on her good side and not on her bad side then okay. you're safe yeah, right yeah, yeah. like you're not getting getting any of those disparaging comments you're on her good side yeah until one of those comments were like said to me. I think it was around Halloween and um, we were all deciding to match as like a group of friends mm -hmm. and we decided to all kind of get the same outfit and she had already gotten her outfit um, and I didn't get mine yet. So I was like, oh, what size should I get? And she was like, well, I got a small, so you should probably get a medium. Is it's, she is she visibly like shorter and small? No. no. Oh. I think she might be taller and like there's mm -hmm. not, there's n it was very not, like obvious there was not an obvious difference mm. between us so i was like oh that's interesting that that comment would be made yeah but it's also kind of a like being a woman right like just be talking like bringing up size or differences in size and like if i'm a small you're probably a medium like that is just it like self-awareness i yeah, think yeah, yeah. of what to say to a friend um was something that I that I then saw as like oh these are this is not this is not healthy for for me mm. right I think um, if I were in my 30s and that had happened to me I probably would have pulled her aside and said like hey that I didn't like that comment but I think in the moment I was so frozen and so from that point on I kind of just like kind of just ghosted her a little bit which I don't know if it's the right move mm. to make but I was in my 20s I didn't really know how to handle these like toxic friendships and stopped talking to her and. Somewhat recently, she did text me again, and she was like, oh, hey, how are you? Like, we should get coffee. And I was like, 
Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know if I want to. And now that I'm in my 30s, I'm like protecting my energy, protecting my space. There are so many people that I want to invest my time into mm. people that make me feel good about myself and vice versa. I, you know, that's the energy that I want to put out into the world as well. So I said, I hope you're doing well and kind of left it at that and did Oof. not grab coffee with her. But I think I don't know if that's like the right solution to just let these friendships kind of fizzle out. Mm. But that that's how I would approach it. I don't know if either of you would approach it differently, though. How would you approach it? Oh, man. You know what it is? I, it's, it's funny because you asked us originally, do you have any toxic friendships? And I was like, I was like, oh, no. And, but as you're talking, I was like, oh, yeah, definitely had one. Mm-hmm. I think it's it, it depends on the dynamic. Because, for example, if this friend you might see at an event or she's someone that you're like, I'm never going to see again, I think mm-hmm. I feel like the fade out's okay. But if you mm-hmm. know you might run into her or whatever, you have still have to be cordial. Mm-hmm. But also, like, set your boundaries. Like, oh, like, I would probably be making excuses. Like, oh, it's like, I'm sorry. This season's, like, really busy for me. Which it is. But also, like, I kind of don't want to hang out with you. You know? It's, like, yeah. it's weird. Yeah. Because you guys never confronted the issue before, right? No. Yeah. That's hard. I think I would now at this point mm-hmm. in my life. Yeah. But I think back then I was just like, oh. I'm now, like, potentially, like, leaning on too comfortable slash getting towards, like, the bad side of, you know, the commentary that she makes. So I just prefer not to get that comfortable anymore. I think it's totally okay to do the fade out when it's, like, early stages of a relationship. And, like, it's not – I mean, does she, like, tap you, like, multiple times? We were pretty close. Yeah. I I would just do the fade out. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'll just be real. The sizing thing, I feel like, depending on the friend group, they might just say it, though. What do you mean? Like, I think that if, if I was a Vicky Lindsay, we would be like, oh, you're a da-da-da. We'll just say up front. But I think you just also just like, it's not like she said it like very like conniving, kind of like. A, it, like it, a, it felt like, kind of like, conniving. It felt okay. conniving. Kind of like, oh, you're mm, one of those. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. I think when we talk about it, it's more like, oh, I feel like we, we give more context. Like, oh, I feel it's a little looser here. So I would say this. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. No, it definitely came from a way, uh, a, a place of putting someone probably else like. Down. Down a little bit yeah, to like yeah. make themselves feel better. But yeah. I'm like. Mm. I'll show you a picture later. I think we're the same size. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so toxic friendships, they can be very hard to deal with. Mm-hmm. But what about if you have a friend who has, like, an annoying behavior? Mm, yeah. How do you, do you have an experience of, like, do you address it or wow. do you not? Mel, Mel like, has is, thoughts. She has major Mel thoughts. has yeah. thoughts. I have thoughts. I, maybe I'm just someone that gets, like, kind of easily irritated sometimes. Okay, I'll say this. I think it depends on the behavior. Like, if, if it's a behavior that's affecting people around us i will say something like for example i don't know if it's a friend it's my cousin sorry to put you on blast but we were in taiwan and we were on the mrt which is like their subway station a subway transportation and it's relatively quiet but he was like talking hell aloud Hmm. and i'm just like kind of more like are you not aware that no one's talking and like Hmm. i know we're americans and like we're more maybe more boisterous but i'm just more like we're also in a different country where you should also just be aware of your surroundings a bit more and respect what you're what around what's around you my cousin does have a tendency to be like i don't really care like i'm mm. just me mm. which in some ways is good some ways is bad yeah. and i'm just like i think that mom was like dude can you like just can you like hey we should, let's lower our vo- volume or like can you talk a little quieter then i'll say something but if it's like a habit that they just had that i find annoying that's not hurting someone mm. i will probably do a few things first one i will make a joke and be like oh you know do that when blah, blah. <laughs> like you know when you yeah and then let's see what they say <laughs> what's it, an example of a small annoying habit i don't want to say it because <laughs> I, I think because one of us <laughs> no because it's like i do have friends that listen oh, and that yeah, are aware yeah, i don't i don't want to like call that like they be like oh shit that's me i'm like yeah obviously that thing i did didn't work so <laughs> so if i do the joke and they're like still doing it I would probably just bite my tongue and accept that that's just a behavior they have, mm. a tick that annoys the shit out of me that I probably just would avoid if I can. But I can't be like, that thing you do that, that I find really fucking annoying that's normal to you, I fucking hate it. Like, it doesn't make sense to call it out if it does nothing. If you don't think they're going to change it. And it's not right, like it's yeah, hurting yeah. anyone. Like, yeah, if it's, it's affecting hurting. people and, the, and something else, then it's different. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think the same way. I think it's like if it's affecting me more than like a short period of time. Yeah. Like yeah, if it's yeah. like the annoying habit happens and then I'm like, oh, that's so annoying. And then a minute later I'm over it. Then I'm like, OK, that's just something that their habit that's yeah. kind of annoying. But it is what it is. And you don't want to, you know, make them feel uncomfortable about it and very self-conscious about it. Mm. But if it is something that it like sits with me afterwards of like, ooh, I still feel this way, then I will probably say something. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What? 
I, she I, has a thought. Another thought. <laughs> I realize with annoying habits, I feel like I'm less likely to call out friends than I am my boyfriend. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm not like, sure. What's, what's an example? <clears throat> chewing with your mouth open. Or loud chewing. I'd be like, bro. Do you have friends that do that? I don't know this. Is it because you have to spend a lot of time with your boyfriend and you're like, if I'm going to be versus like friends, like you're not with them 24 seven. Maybe I just more like, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe because he's the only one in my group. I'm like, yeah, obviously noticeable for myself. Mm. Mm. What do you think is an annoying habit of yours? Oh, I'm scared because I know you, you guys will be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to think for myself. What's an annoying I have a couple. habit I have? Oh, you do know. I okay. think sometimes I always need a poo before a meeting. And so I feel bad that I always tell you guys, like, mm. I got to poo, whatever, there's that. Two, I think sometimes... We can't, we can't stop that. I so can't. That's a natural habit that <laughs> true. I'm okay with, yeah. Two, I think sometimes I talk too much. Mm, I don't find... I mean, I actually appreciate it, I think, because I tend to talk less Yeah. sometimes. That's it. I'm trying to think of other annoying. I know I have a, a chronic issue with being late. Always, like, 5 to 15 minutes late. And that's an, that's something that is annoying mm. I feel like what do I do there's definitely things I just can't think of them can you share with me what? <laughs> what do I do I think I used to think it was annoying but then I learned to appreciate it what mm. I think sometimes you always encourage me to go to things or in, like like come on or like oh come, oh, come yeah, to this yeah. I'm just like no I'm, okay okay I am an instigator for yeah. sure <laughs> for sure yeah but there are yeah. moments I'm like I, that's why I hate I have to admit like I hate to admit that like there are days where I'm like ugh, but I go and I'm like folks fun like <laughs> there that's why I'm just like I can't really like it's not really annoying yeah hmm. okay cool wow we just had a moment y'all <laughs> yeah. oh sorry so, oh yes <laughs> It's not annoying, but it's just something I'm just like, I know I have to accept the days I sleep over your place and we go to the gym in the morning. You're like, let's wake up at seven. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm just hey, like, you agree to go the because day I before. Know, I know because I know that's the only time that works for our schedule. Mm, yeah. But a part of me is like, dude, I sleep. I wake up at 830. <laughs> and I'm just like, have to tell myself, like, I have to, I can't, I'm not going to sleep as much. Like, it is what it is. But then mm. when you're there, you're like, yes. And I'm there. I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. Yes. Okay. Cool. That was a good one. I'm glad we got that out. Next question is about having a close friend and your relationship, you notice, is starting to drift. Mm. What would you do? Um, for me personally, I think I have had this experience happen before. And honestly, I think that it's almost unavoidable if you have long-term friends. Because as life happens, most of the times you guys might be parting ways, someone might be going to grad school, someone mm -hmm. else might be moving away to another city for work, um, someone gets married first, someone starts a family first, or you know, and you're kind of missing each other. There's gonna be ebbs and flows where it feels like you drift. So mm -hmm. my first thing would be, Maybe don't be so afraid. Like um, a drift initially doesn't mean it's forever. But if you do feel like, okay, it's not that close right now and I want to be closer with them, I would first put in more active effort. So I would reach out to them more. I would try to schedule things more. I would like, you know, make it as easy as possible for them to hang out with you. Meaning like um, I'll pick the location and the time or you give me a couple of dates that are available, whatever. But if you're finding that they're still kind of pulling back, mm -hmm. then maybe have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And then at the end also it's like, I feel like you can't really force things that much. I think that's the the max of effort that I would put in. And then after that, let it go and be okay with it changing and maybe getting tighter later in life. Or mm. maybe it doesn't and that's okay. Hmm. Good advice. The next ones are really juicy. And I'm actually very curious. So the, the next one is, my friends got divorced. One told me, one didn't. Should I reach out to the one who didn't? Let me think. If I were in the situation, I would probably not reach out to this other friend because I would think that they're not reaching out to you for a reason. Mm. Like there has to be a reason why they're not telling you. Maybe they're not ready to talk ab to talk about it. Maybe they're thinking that one friend that the other part of that did tell you is telling you on their behalf as a couple. You know what I mean? Because it's just like. But then so then it's like if if so, do you think they would appreciate you just being like, hey, like I care about you. I want to check in to see how you're doing. I would give them space to be like, maybe they're not ready, but then maybe if a long a time has passed, I would message the other friend or the partner who did a message and be like, hey, I hope you're doing okay. I heard what happened from blah. Like, I just want to, I want you know, I want to let you know that I'm here if you ever want to talk about or need something. But for now, I'll give you your space to just mm -hmm. process and grieve or do whatever you need to do. Sometimes I also wonder like what, if I knew the reason for the divorce, would I mm. even want to reach out to the other friend? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Like, you don't know. Like, if it's, like, a mutual, like, respectful thing and, like, sure. But 
what if that friend did something to the other partner mm. and didn't want to say anything because of shame or whatever? Then I would I wouldn't know how to handle that. Yeah. So that's how that's how it hypothetically handled this like divorce question with friends. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one. Cool. My best friend doesn't like my boyfriend, but I want mm -hmm. them to be friends. Any thoughts? Oh, this is a really hard one. <laughs> I feel like, um, yeah, this is a toughie where it's someone that's really important in your life and you're bringing a new person in. If you feel like they don't get along, I would say, first of all, there is probably going to be a natural tendency for your best friend to be a little bit defensive mm. just because she cares a lot about you or he does. Um, and they're going to they're going to want to very much um, make sure that you're protected and that you're safe. Mm. And so they already know that they're coming on the defense. Right. And so um, it might just be that they need to get to know that person a little bit more in order to start to develop, to warm up to them. So here's what I would do. You are the one person who knows both of them the best. Try to think of any commonalities they might have. It might be something like, oh, they both are really into like, I don't know, specialty coffees or um, hmm, maybe they're both like really early birds, like they get up earlier, whatever it is. Mm. But try to find something common and then arrange a hangout for the three of you. So don't just put them together by themselves. Go go with them and then try to kind of like mediate it. And then, you know, know, knowing that you know a little bit more about this person, the other person, you can kind of like guide the conversation. If you don't feel like the most confident in your ability to do that, identify another mutual friend who's mm. like very social and really good at that and then just make it a small intimate group gathering, you know, like the four of you. Um, but basically, I would just try to create more instances where they can hang out together and get to know each other. Mm. Um, if at that point there's still like tension and it's not working, I feel like you might just have to be okay with it and learn to live with it. And I know that like a younger me would have said, ooh, it's probably not gonna work out. But an older me now who see friends that, you know, do meet people later in life and partner up. And uh, maybe it's like they're very good friends, but the friends just, they're out of town friends or something like that. There are ways that you guys can just keep things cordial and not everyone has to be best friends and it's mm. okay. So I think it kind of depends. You can give it a fair effort. I feel like I have so many thoughts. variables and thoughts on yeah. this because it, it really, for me, it depends on the situation. Like, for example, I know people that like, this is the stories I've been told. Like, I have a friend that has is a serial dater, will bring in someone new all the time to the point where mm -hmm. their friends are just like, dude, how many, is it the next, that next guy? Like, we were making so much effort for everyone you bring in. We're getting fed up and tired of this. Mm. And, it's, and they're more like, we want to make an effort, but are you going to cycle through someone else next? So it's kind of like I would, I would throw back to the question, the person mm. asking, assess your dynamic. Like, what's the dynamic like right now? Like, are you someone that is like this person that always brings someone in, and they're, and I guess also empathize from your friends and how they feel. Like, why would your your friend why would not your, be so open? Because sometimes yeah. I feel like usually if you know your like, how do you say like your friends know you really well and you have a certain dynamic. I'm assuming it'd be kind of semi translated with your partner. Mm. right i don't know you would think that yeah i'm thinking think about that. like love is blind you know how mm -hmm. there was that one girl oh, man i'm not gonna know names so this is gonna be a ter yeah. terrible <laughs> reference but one of the guys with the curly hair oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah you know I, what I'm I know exactly what you're talking about <laughs> micah happened. and yes. the curly hair boy yes and curly yes hair boy. like her best friend hated him yeah for like no reason though i feel like that's where it was just uh, like a vibe she's yeah. like vibe check is not working yeah mm. but so, but the thing was, she was jealous of him like, no taking away her no i think she was just like why would you be with someone like that and yeah. i was like that's was, just like, rude oh. yeah. but then in that situation at to whoever the listener that asked the question are your friends a little just more judgy like if that's just a reality of it then i would level set with them and mm. your partner saying hey they're, they're kind of they're gonna be tough just fyi they might be da 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 like then then it's like then it, it changes the dynamic again of like mm. how to navigate the situation because yeah. it's almost like your best friend is going to try and protect you right from yeah. getting hurt because they know you the best probably yeah. before this yeah. like new boyfriend comes into place so it's like whose value whose opinion do you value more your boyfriends or your best friends That's true. but she was mean she was she mean. was really mean mm. so i just think it really depends on your dynamic so yeah. just i would have different variables them. yeah yeah but interesting question next question is what to do when your so is friends with someone you don't trust or like Ooh, oh. your SO is friends with someone that you don't trust or like. I think if this was the case and I was the person that wasn't trusting um, someone, I would ask myself, like, why don't I trust or like this person? Mm -hmm. 
you know, what is it about them that is rubbing me the wrong way? Is it like how they talk to me? Is it how they look mm -hmm. at me? Is mm -hmm. it, do they have a quality about them that perhaps I'm lacking and there's a relationship with them and my significant other where I'm like, oh, I wish I had more of that dynamic. Mm -hmm. You know, is it, is it making me feel insecure about myself? I feel like I've been in this scenario before and I've tried to narrow down the concrete like points of why I felt this way about this person. Because when you just approach your significant other and you're like, I don't like him or her then mm. they're gonna be like mm. on the defense right right like why yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and be like i don't know it's just a feeling yeah that's not a valid answer mm. i mean it is a valid answer but it is much much more helpful if you have reasons for Specific, why yeah and coming to your so in a very level-headed way of mm. like these are a, B, and C. This is why I don't know if I like this person. Mm. And then maybe your SO, hopefully they can empathize with you and see your side of things and see the dynamic and understand and be able to sort of like support you through it mm. or, you know, work w with you and that friend to try and like bring out different different personalities where you can actually like vibe with each other a bit better. Mm. But definitely communicate with your SO about this. I feel like if you don't, and I, I've mm. done this before, but I just like, I don't know it's okay, I'm never going to see this person, but then yeah, I do, yeah. and then every time I'm just, like, feeling a little, like, mm. awkward. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's better to just be upfront with your SO about it. I'm over here, man. Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever felt that way? No. no Actually, okay. no. Not kind of, not, not that I can recall. It's not like been so bad. It's more like, oh, the personality difference, but I, we get along okay. Mm -hmm. But let me think about this. <laughs> not <laughs> None in my current relationship. I'll okay, say that. Cool. Every year I tell myself to lean into a hobby and photography has been at the top of my list for a few years now. Last year I was able to bring back a digital camera to document my travels back to Taiwan for the first time and it just captured the memory so beautifully. Like the photos I got are just so vivid and it just, it's a different experience. Even though I have my phone on me, capturing photos and videos through a different device just challenges you to look at everything in a different way. As I'm preparing for my upcoming travels to Japan in a few months, I've been looking into options with the Nikon Z30. It's compact, lightweight, and perfect for traveling. I'm also debating if I want to vlog this trip to have content to look back on. The Z30 is also super easy to use and it features a front-facing screen if you want to vlog. Crisp 4K video and worry-free autofocus. I swear, my content's always losing focus, so this is perfect. I just can't wait to capture these unforgettable experiences with the Z30. If you're looking for a camera, check out NikonUSA.com slash podcast Z30. Again, that's NikonUSA.com slash podcast Z30. Okay, so the next questions will be around maintaining friendships. Mm. How do you make friends when you're older? Making friends when you're older can definitely be challenging. Um, I think oftentimes, like, when we're younger, there's, you know, sometimes you have a little bit more energy, and I feel like the 20s are a time where people naturally are just, like, um, open to getting to meet new people because they're, like, starting to work, their lives are in transition. As you get older, people have all, they're at all different stages, right? Mm -hmm. One recommendation I would have is to try to tap into your, like, past networks. Hmm. So, for example, for a while I was living in a different city um, from where I grew up. I was in San Francisco. And then when I came back to L.A., I had to kind of, like, make new friends. And what I did was I thought about who do I already know in L.A.? So there are some of the people that I went to high school with. A lot of them had since then left like our hometown, but there were a couple of them. So I've tapped into that network and then reached out again. Uh, and then I thought about who did I go to college with and are they in LA? So maybe do a little bit of that. Think about where you are geographically because I think the older we get, like physical location and closeness mm -hmm. plays a big role in being able to like start a friendship and develop it. Um, think about people that you may have known as acquaintances, but maybe you weren't friends then, but you could totally be friends now. Um, and that's something that like from my personal experience, I also noticed one of my really good friends is a new mom. She's living in a new suburb that's a little bit, um, it's kind of close to where she grew up, but she for you know many years was like living in different states. And she went on a Facebook group and looked at like new moms and she was like, oh, there's this is a girl that I went to high school with. We like barely knew each other then, but now we're in similar phases. And then you have something in common mm. that you can kind of like click about. Um, so that's, I think that would be my first tip to go, go that route. I like those tips. Me too. Yeah. I think it's also like uh, it's something that I've noticed is even now at this age, like sometimes when you're at an event and you put yourself out there, it always takes mm -hmm. putting yourself out there because you're not, yeah. it's hard. It, no one's going to, someone might come up to you and talk to you, but like the chances of you making a friend is if you were to actually go out and like approach someone, right? And I know that's like sometimes very scary, especially when you're older, but it is surprising how um, reciprocated that action might be mm -hmm. back towards you. Like I was at a club 
and I, I went came back from the bathroom and then I saw this like person dancing I was like yeah I don't know <laughs> this is so random this is such a tangent but <laughs> yeah I forgot I said something way cooler than that <laughs> I was just like I said something uh, yeah and then she responded and she was like yeah back right <laughs> <laughs> and then she i think she saw on my lock screen that i had a baby and she's like i'm oh. a mom too and i was like what and then we exchanged numbers and I, I didn't reach back out to her but i'm just saying it's like putting out that energy you're gonna yeah, receive yeah, yeah. that energy back. it just starts with the yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was i swear it was cooler than that it was uh yeah no <laughs> this is good yeah yeah you got a baby i got a baby too never it's like <laughs> But I think, yeah, I mean, I like yeah. it. It was like being open, right? Yeah. To like, because if you hadn't said hi to her, she wouldn't have felt safe to be like, hey, you have a baby, like, you know, looking at your screen. Exactly. So. Exactly. <laughs> I will never hear the word, yeah, the same now. <laughs> okay. I think I have, yeah, the next question. Um, so, how do you sustain long distance friendships? Hmm. As someone who does have long distance friendships, a lot of my friends are in the Bay Area I'm in, and I'm currently in LA. Um, I also feel like living in LA, there's some like some long distance friendships to, for friends that live in Orange County. Like it yeah. feels like all of the map. But I like I always say this, but it really works. I'm always in every group chat with the group of friends. Mm. We don't talk every day, but when it's a birthday, when something's going on, I feel like I'm always looped in. Like I know my Bay Area friends, like they're like, oh, like they're going somewhere this weekend. They're talking about something. I know what's going on. It feels like I'm included and I'm part of the action. So group chats are really helpful. The second thing is like having intentional FaceTime moments with your close friends. Like my one of my best friends, Sally, San Francisco. She's really busy being a lawyer, but I'll randomly call her and then we'll just talk for 20 minutes to catch up on life. And it just like, it's nice to just like hear what's going on. So FaceTiming, um, the last thing that really... I'm starting to think about more often is like I, I think with the friends that you don't really see as much is to be like hey let's plan a trip together so we could both fly yeah. out or meet each other and do That's something good... together because trips and vacations in general you like it's a lot of memories are created and experience through experiences so like for like my friend Cindy even though she lives in Orange County we don't see each other all the time we decided to go to New York together last year and that was such a fun time that we like we're able to like catch up in the hotel room and like on the subway ride. And so like, I think just setting these like trips with your friends that you don't get to see often, mm -hmm. but you want to. I like, that. Trips. I like that last one yeah. a lot. Yeah. 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 Great. How have you maintained your friendships through different phases of your lives? How has your friendships changed as people have gotten into relationships or married? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Um, I will say a really interesting change that you would think is obvious, but I didn't quite anticipate is that when you have really close friends and they get married, um, you kind of gain another best friend, mm -hmm. I guess, in their partner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you, it would make sense. Right. But I guess I just never really thought about that. Like when I was first meeting their partners and they're introducing, I'm like, yeah, he's cool, you know? Um, but yeah, slowly, like I noticed that and it takes intentional effort, right? Like I would still go out and hang out one-on-one -on -one with my friends, but we did a lot more of like, whether it was like a double date, most of the time it was like third wheeling. Cause mm -hmm. you know, I was like single for a long time and, um, and it, it's just like getting to know their partner and then you kind of gain like you kind of, yeah, gain an extra best friend. I guess that's like a big dynamic that I've seen that changes as we go through different life stages. Mm. Mm. I feel like I am the person that has changed <laughs> in oh. our in our friend group. Like yeah. I'm one of the first ones to, um, oh, I, I don't know, not get married, but like have a kid. Yeah, yeah I guess yeah. one of um, like the first tier, I guess, to do that. And for me, I definitely felt in my mind, even when I was pregnant, I was like, oh my gosh, all of a sudden, like my friends are never going to understand. I need to go find new friends. I need to have mommy friends only. And it's going to be a whole like shift and change. And I ended up deciding that that was my catastrophic way of thinking mm -hmm. of like spiraling into this, you know, all my friends are going to change now because our lifestyles are just so different with me with a baby. But with that intentional planning, I feel like our friend group has actually gotten closer now that I have like this baby it's like now i'm able to bring our friends into more like wholesome daytime activities mm -hmm. versus before i feel like we were always night friends you know like we, mm -hmm. we did a lot of things at night yeah, like hang out yeah. drinking going to dinner and things like that but like for example um i think it was like last month um i think janet you were busy but i was like mel let's go to pretend city down in <laughs> orange county right this place is just for kids it is an like purely for kids mm. a pretend city and mel you were like okay i'm down and we had so much fun there yeah we had so much fun and i think 
a lot of these activities unlock this like childlike joy in you that I think all of us, even as adults and all of us in our 30s, like we still hold on to and we still Mm -hmm. love the nostalgia of, you know, and even like this past weekend, we went to um, my family and I went to train town in Griffith Park and it's just like trains. (laughs) But like and I was like, our friends wouldn't like this. But after experiencing it and riding two trains and having a little picnic, I was like, our friends would love this. You know, Mm, like this is something that friends can do as well. So um, I also know that like there are certain friends within our friend group that are like, hey, bring your kid out. Like, I really want to take care of him. Like, I Mm love our friend Andrew is just like texting me like, I want to see your baby. Like, you know, and it's people, I feel like it deepens the relationship and brings your relationship to another Mm -hmm. level. Yeah. If you're not thinking to yourself, if you're not having this like predetermined notion that, oh, my friends are not going to want to not going to enjoy this type of lifestyle Mm. i think all of us have that wholesomeness to us still that doesn't usually get unlocked on a day-to-day because they're not going to like a a kid's park or something this actually reminded me when um if you're speaking of this topic i remember when helen got pregnant and i was i actually cried to janet because i felt i was gonna lose you as a friend and I know that was like in the moment I felt selfish thinking that way, and I was so. And we had like a we cr- I cried talking yeah, to you about this in your bed, about this, yeah, just to talk about like how our, our dynamic is going to change. But to be honest, like I think just na- by we we just all gradually just changed in our own way. But like I think you're right though; it did bring us. It just changed. It just evolved. Like we do a lot yeah. of sleepovers now at your house. Yeah, yeah. Like I feel like I'm like you know addition to your family sometimes at dinner i'm like hey i'm here i'm the like this is a sitcom like i would be like that aunt that like you know kind of like you know yeah babysits i don't know but i do think it just it it unlocks a different territory of our friendship that, yeah. that that's been really nice i think that's how i feel too and that takes um i think that takes intentional like planning and really um changing your mindset about you know just what parenthood is and how your friends are involved like y'all are like the aunties you know no. like when we were kids and we had like these young aunties yeah, and we're yeah. like oh now she's so stylish <laughs> and so pretty and so cool like that is you you know no so. i'm so excited <laughs> Hello everyone, Helen here, and this one is for all the parents out there who have babies that are still in their diapies. If you're a parent, I will be shocked if you haven't experienced a nasty, outrageously unnecessary blowout just yet. We used to experience them, and they were never a good time. But now, with the new and improved Pampers Swaddlers Diaper with Blowout Barrier Innovation, Swaddlers prevents up to 100% of leaks, even blowouts. This diaper has a blowout barrier at the back waist to prevent those messy leaks and blowouts, plus dual leak guard barriers at the legs to help protect leaks where they happen most often. Pampers Swaddlers are dermatologist approved by the Skin Health Alliance, hypoallergenic, and free of parabens and latex. Yes, we only want the best for our babies. They're available in sizes newborn to size 8, and now feature designs with new animal characters, Shiloh the Elephant and Freddy the Duck. How cute! For trusted protection, trust Pampers, the number one pediatrician recommended brand. So the next question is that now that you all have significant others and family, is it harder to schedule time to hang out? I will say this answer might vary depending on the individual and your friendship dynamic. Like I mentioned said it real fast, but I got it. <laughs> wow. Real friends. My only issue was when, not issue, but like when Helen got pregnant, that was like the only thing we had to like work through. But I think we're fine now. Like I said, it does depend on your dynamic with your friends because I will say we are really fortunate that we're, the three of us are all part of a larger friend group, which makes it easier for us to hang out. Like, it's not like we're in different groups and we have to find additional mm-hmm. time. Like our friend... Like Tim would be, oh, let's do this this weekend. Like there's always large gatherings that are happening lately Mm -hmm. that we all kind of just show up to. And it's like we're a part of this larger group of friends. So I think if you're all part of a big group, it kind of makes it easier Mm. to be part of more like similar social events. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it definitely Mm -hmm. does require having either you being someone who's proactive and planning or like your friends. Yes. Someone in the group being. Yes. So I think that it depends. Um. I will say that whenever I go back home now, it is really tough to schedule things with friends because mm-hmm. Ray and I are both from the Bay Area and both our sets of friends are and both our families are there. Oh, yeah. So it's a lot of like, I get, sometimes I'll go back and then like a friend will be like, hey, you're in town, let's hang out. And sometimes I'll be like, I just hung out with you last time I was back. I have to hang out with his friends or I have to mm-hmm. hang out with my family or this is a family focused trip. Like it's a lot of like kind of explaining that out and it, it sucks. Cause I'm not trying to like prioritize people or like groups. It's just more like I have to like really consider like I have a partner now that I also want to be present for mm-hmm. his really close friends things, his family dinners, mm-hmm. you know. So just like that could be kind of difficult. Um, 
to to figure out sometimes. But yeah, normal though. Well, I will say because we've known Mel in another relationship in the past before, as do all of you <laughs> who have been longtime listeners of this podcast. But in 2017, 18. I yeah, I will say that I feel like you are much more present mm. with this relationship than with your past one. I wonder if it's because I've mentioned to you in the past, like, where's Mel? <laughs> where's Mel? You know, oh, I, re- she's I remember up. that setting. So this is why it's important to have friends in the group that plan. Because I remember at that time, mm. you would come to me a lot, be like, oh, like, I'm, we have this going on. Do we have anything? And our group used to be very, like, kind of last minute. Mm-hmm. So her calendar would just get booked up with the guys' things because, like, no one was, like, initiating of we're going to be hanging out, we're going to be doing this. Yeah. I will say that was part of the factor. Part. Oh, part of the factor. Part of the factor. Yeah. Did it yeah. feel just kind of natural for you to? Mm, I think back then it was. I, I don't, I'm trying to like think back. You're like 25. I yeah, was. Tw- it was a long time. I was 20. Uh, I was like 2018. I don't know. Old episode. <laughs> I talked about it for sure. Um, I think it was maybe in that dynamic. Their, their friends planned a lot more ahead, so mm. I was like, I, it was just more. But our friends do plan a lot more ahead in general now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think partially because it's like once families come along, you it's have like have to, to like think yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's good. I yeah. feel like it helps like everyone kind of yeah. just stealing your time. Yeah. But also, <laughs> me, so the reality is maybe it's because my ex boyfriend. You, I just like. You guys wouldn't get along as well. You know, it's just... A, it's oh, a, it's that's a, a good insight, too. It's, yeah. it's kind of like the earlier question, right? What if, like, your yeah. best friend and your boyfriend... It's not like that we didn't get along. I feel like I just not, didn't have the opportunity to, like, really get to know yeah. him. Because we always, like, went clubbing back then. Yeah. It wasn't yeah, like, let's to go to dinner. Yeah. yeah. And I think Ray also likes what we do. Like, he likes our routine of hanging out too mm. it's very like familiar with him it's very wholesome we're yeah. very wholesome people <laughs> and until helen goes let's let's drink shots at dinner that happens sometimes that can be wholesome yeah <laughs> okay next question i have always been the one to initiate how do i step out of this role without missing out on staying connected um i could relate sort of um i will say i think lately i've been more of an have i always been an initiator i think i with, with planning dinners or like going somewhere else like, let's go here you do yeah you do i think in our group of friends i am one of many planners in the group so i think that is also like an advantage because if i don't plan something tim will like <laughs> tim our friend will always like what, he's always asking what are you doing this weekend whatever so i'm not the sole planner in my group so it alleviates a lot of pressure but there are some periods with like maybe certain friends i'm like always initiating i'm just like it does get annoying because I get fed up and I'm like, all right, well, what are we like, can you do something like, mm. but what I do in that situation is I will step back and see if this person will actually take initiative at all. If they don't, I would probably message them and saying, Hey, it's been a while since we did something, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm, I might be a little passive aggressive to be really frank and be like, Oh yeah, I planned the last one. Do you want to think mm. about what we want to do next time? Like, do you want to, what do you, what's something you haven't done that we can do together? I think kind it's of, a good way to prompt them because they may not even be aware. Yeah. And then they're just mm-hmm. like, oh, but if you ask them straight out, they're like, oh yeah, okay, maybe yeah. I should think about something. To yeah. Them. So I think I'll do it that way and I'll be like, oh, like I planned the last before, like, hey, like, is there something you want to do? And then like throw it to them to plan and do that a couple of times and see. And maybe when they plan it, be like, oh my God, that was so much fun. Like you should totally do more mm. of this. Mm. If it's not fun, <laughs> you take back the role, you know? <laughs> Because you don't know, you know? Yeah. You're um, like, why am I wasting my time on this, like, this terrible day? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But that's what I would do. Um, yeah, I think it's fair if you're the initiator. Like, I think it's fair to ask sometimes. To, I think yeah. it's really fair to ask. Yeah. 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 I think there was this one time within our group of friends where we were like, okay, how about we like split it up by quarter? And like one person takes a quarter and plans like a little trip for everyone. And that didn't happen. And it did not happen. Because I'm like, <laughs> hard, yeah. there's no way. Like, this person's going to plan this trip for everyone. So yeah, it does fall on like a certain number of people and very thankful for, for those people. Thanks, yeah. Tim, Eric. I'm just thinking people. <laughs> Excuse me. Helen. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're one of them. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. Last question. What makes platonic friendships special and different from romantic relationships? I actually was thinking about this question and had a hard time like putting into words, but the one thing that came, that kept coming up my, in my, in my heart and in my brain is I feel like in some ways platonic friendships like when I think of my close friendships especially my girlfriends they feel more unbreakable Mm. than my romantic ones Mm. not that they can't be broken but I feel like this bond is like made of like what is that Wakanda metal (laughs) (laughs) 
Wakanda metal? Wakanda, Wakanda metal. metal. Oh, Wakanda. Vibranium? Vibranium. Uh, okay, yes. I was like, <laughs> titanium? It's been a while. Yeah, when it is. I think with friendships, you just put so much more time in it. Maybe because I think, like, my friendships also, like, been years and years. And mm. I think about those friendships, the memories, the things we've been to the, together. And I think for myself, I am someone that is very vulnerable with my friendships you guys have seen me through ups and downs that i'm a little bit more hesitant to share right away with a partner that i'm not afraid to share with my friends i'm like we're bonded like mm -hmm. it is and I, I don't just like there's something so magical because i feel like even the things we talk about the jokes the humor like i don't know it's just different with female friendships for me like yeah. it just feels very like solid yeah I feel like, I mean, the clear difference between a platonic and a romantic, I would say, is the sex. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> is the sex you done. I mean, I feel like there, with both types of relationships, there is going to be a level of love. Like, love yeah, can be defined yeah. in, in different ways. And I think that is a foundation for very good relationships, no matter, whether it's romantic or platonic. But the one difference is, like, the intimacy, right? The mm. intimacy in not just, like, I'm not going to have sexy time with my platonic friends, <laughs> but also kind of, like, the mental intimacy, I think, is what you're mm. talking about, right? Mm. Like, that there's a mental in intimacy with, like, female friendships that is definitely different from, like, your romantic partner relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I will say, I think my my from my perspective, like the the level of mental intimacy that I get to with a partner does feel faster mm. than with a friend that I like just made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we get there faster, and I mm. think it's because for me, I kind of force this like vulnerability out to mm. make to see if there is gonna actually be like longevity with this person mm. and if they can actually accept me for who I am, versus with like friends i kind of let that slowly come out mm. and see if they're like comfortable with mm. who i really am and then with a partner i'm like we got to get there right away if not then i got to move on mm. you yeah know? so yeah, maybe yeah. with like female friendships it's like you want it to last longer and you're more protective of it yeah mm. and then you get to like a, a deeper place because of that but then with like romantic relationships i feel like it that for me i guess happens faster where we get to that vulnerable state faster mm. yeah yeah I'm trying to think too. Maybe because for me too, with my girlfriends, I always associate such joy, so much joy. And it's maybe because also for myself, I am like, I only been in like a one year relationship. Like it's mm. not, it's, I'm still experiencing yeah. what it really truly is to be in a relationship versus mm -hmm. I think of my, my friendships. I'm just like, man, like some of the memories I could literally sit on and just bring so much joy just sitting here thinking about it that you're like, man, that was I'll randomly yeah. get a text from Mel that's just like a video of us in a hotel room eating frozen dinners, <laughs> <laughs> like crushing ice. And you're just like, I miss this. I'm like, oh. Random, Aww. right? Yeah. Well, even though, because every year I think about, I look at like, for your birthdays, both of you guys, I would look at videos. Like I still laugh at that video of Janet putting on the falsies. She's like, I look like a parrot. Or <laughs> something. So just these things are just like, it just makes you laugh and yeah. smile that like, I feel like. I think maybe too, like with the relationships, I do associate like it's gonna take work. Like not yeah. saying friendships oh, don't I take work, it. but yeah, yeah. it's work to be like are we more be, serious. Yeah. yeah. Like can you be the father or the parent of my mm. child? Yeah. My, can it's you more like intense? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Versus friendship, it feels a little bit more like a net it's, it's a natural also. thing. Less pressure. Yeah. You don't put as much pressure yeah. on it. Yeah. yeah. So I don't yeah. know. I think actually, also, yeah, what do you think, Jay, about this? Yeah, I think like I mean so you know how they say that nowadays we put so much pressure on our partner to be like everything? Mm. It makes me think about how I have interests that my partner mm. doesn't have, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to have friends where we connect on that level and him and I don't connect on that level. So I think it's, um, it is going to be different. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally relate. <laughs> because I always joke around like, I think with Ray and I, we have such different humor. But when I'm with girlfriends, I'm like, do you get it? And we just laugh <laughs> like hyenas. And I love that feeling of like, uncontrollable laughter yeah, yeah it's like it's my shit yeah <laughs> i'm curious actually for all our listeners out there like what do you think is so special or different with friendships platonic friendships mm -hmm. versus relationships because i think all of us have different answers based on our experiences so yeah. i would want to hear like what about your friendship do you feel like it's so special so mm -hmm. leave in the it comments different below. than your mm -hmm. like romantic partner yeah. relationship yeah. i want to read these answers well thank you everyone for tuning in we are three best friends here sitting on this couch so this episode felt like one that you know we love talking about because it's like basically reflecting on our own friendship and helping you all out there that have friendship questions as well so thanks for listening you can catch us every thursday and tuesday on our mini shows and with that we will catch you all on the next episode bye, bye.